Our journey begins inside the living cell. Here, RNA molecules act as messengers, carrying instructions from DNA to build proteins. To study RNA, we first need to isolate them. First, cells are lysed to release RNA using a solution called trizol. Trizol is a solution of phenol and guanidinium isothiocyanate. Guanidinium salts are positively charged molecules that can disrupt the hydrogen bonds that stabilize the structures of proteins, DNA and RNA. This disrupts the organization within the cell, causing breakdown of cellular membrane and denature proteins to release RNA. Now, this mixture with dissolved cellular contents is called cell lysate. Here comes the phenol, which creates separate layers in the cell lysate. The RNA with its negatively charged phosphate backbone is attracted to the polar water layer. Proteins and DNA with more complex structures and hydrophobic regions are drawn to the phenol layer. To get distinct separation between aqueous and organic phase, chloroform is used. When chloroform is added to the mixture and centrifuged, it forms a distinct layer below the aqueous phase due to its higher density. This leads to the formation of three layers. The top aqueous phase contains RNA because of polar environment. The interface contains DNA which is less polar than RNA and gets trapped at the interface. The bottom organic phase contains proteins and other hydrophobic molecules that are drawn to the phenyl chloroform layer. Next, the aqueous phase is collected in a fresh tube. RNA is precipitated from the aqueous phase by adding isopropanol. This causes the RNA to form a pellet upon centrifugation. The RNA pellet is washed with ethanol to remove any remaining impurities such as salts and enzymes. The clean RNA pellet is dissolved in a buffer or water that is free of RNAs. The integrity and purity of RNA are assessed using gel electrophoresis. The concentration of RNA is measured using UV spectrophotometry to determine how much RNA is present in the sample.